course, we're going to be in the book of Matthew, chapter 14. We're going to be verse from scripture that we're all familiar with, most of us. Verses 22 to 33. <coughs> Jesus is on top of our problem. He absolutely is. All the time, even though we don't realize it, he's there. <laughs> We're going to be looking and starting the reading in verse 22 to 33. It says, Immediately Jesus made his disciples get into the boat and go before him to the other side while he sent the multitude away. And when he had sent the multitude away, he went up on the mountain by himself to pray. Now when the evening came, he was alone there. But the boat was now in the middle of the sea, tossed by the waves, for the wind was contrary. Now on the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went to them walking on the sea. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, It is a ghost. And they cried out for fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them, saying, Be of good cheer. It is I. Do not be afraid. And Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. So he said, Come. And when Peter had come down out of the boat, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. But when he saw the wind was boisterous, he was afraid and began beginning to sink. And he cried out, saying, Lord, save me. And immediately Jesus stretched out his hand and called him and said to him, Oh, you of little faith, why did you doubt? And when they got in the boat, the wind ceased, and those who were in the boat came and worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we praise and thank you for your word. We thank you for your truth, Father. We thank you for your word that it speaks to our hearts personally, Father, that your word is a love letter to us, Father. And Father, as we look at your word today, may we each have a personal encounter with you, Lord. I pray that you would fill each person here with your Holy Spirit. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. Father, that everything I share comes from you, Lord. Father, I pray if there's one here today who does not know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, today would be that day of the new birth. We praise and thank you. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. And again, this is a familiar portion of Scripture. I kind of quote uh, many of the Scriptures here uh, in some of my other messages because this part of scripture speaks to me in many different ways and there's so many different applications here. But as we look at this, we want to look at a few different things. Here it's interesting in verse 22 how Jesus immediately gets the disciples into the boat. He wants to hurry them off. He wants to lead the crowd because he's seen, the crowd has seen them, him performing miracles and healing diseases and they wanted Jesus, of course, as we know, for our earthly king. So they wanted to get, he wanted to get the disciples moved quickly. Not only that, the Lord knew the motives, of course, that they weren't that spiritual. And the disciples, if they would have stayed, they would have fallen into the plans of the crowd because they themselves didn't quite understand. They were still uh, in their own situation wanting to know who could be the greatest and sit next to Jesus. So... You know, the people here are all looking at this portion of Scripture in a worldly fashion, not in a spiritual way. But as we look at this, as we see, as we look at this portion of Scripture, there's different things that we can look at and understand and assurances to us. First of all, when we go through struggles and hard times, which we all do, we have to realize if we're, if we're walking with the Lord, He's bringing us into these different struggles purposely. The storm that went on, he knew was going to happen. Okay, and this was a storm of perfection to grow up the disciples, to grow them, because eventually one day they wouldn't be with him. <clears throat> Not like Jonah. Jonah was in a storm of correction. Jonah was in a storm because he disobeyed the Lord. But this is a storm of perfection here. And we look at this. 
Did Jesus know a storm was going to come? Absolutely. This is why it's very interesting because if you look at this portion of scripture, Jesus brought them into this storm. He knew what was going to happen. And then as the Bible tells us here in verse 23, and when he sent the multitudes away, he went up on the mountain by himself to pray. Now when evening came, he was alone there. Of course, he was alone with the Father there. And as we read and study God's word, as I just pointed out, there's two types of storms. There's perfection and there's correction storms. And Jesus went alone there and prayed for the disciples for their faith, that their faith would stay strong at this time as they were going into the trial. And it's interesting because as we look at scripture, there are many Christians today who mistake the idea, uh, think that obedience to God's will is smooth sailing and you're not going to have struggles. And that's totally untrue. Okay, as you follow the Lord many times, you know, the enemy's right there as a bullseye on your back and you'll fall into more trials and more storms and more difficulties. But the Lord is right there with you. It says in John 6, 33, in this world you will have tribulation. <clears throat> but Jesus has overcome the world. And just like uh, was read this morning, 1 Peter 5, 7, cast, casting all your cares upon him for he cares for you. When we go through the hard times and struggles, and we all do because it's like this, everyone. In our world, sin, curse, fallen world, you're either preparing to go into a storm you're in a storm or you're coming out of a storm. Mm -hmm. Something's always going on. And when you're coming out of the storm, I love Romans 8, 28. Because if you're walking with the Lord and you have a desire to be obedient, all things work together for good for those who love God and are called according to his purpose. So he's going to take that hardship and he's going to use it for good. And again, we don't realize, we have to realize something too. When we're going through the storm and struggling and going through hard times and we're praying, really seeking the Lord, others see us and how we're, we're dealing with that situation when we have a great influence on others that don't know the Lord through our struggles. That's something, you know, it's so easy. Praise God, thank you, Jesus, when everything's going well and everything's doing good. But again, what about when the Bible drops out? And the hardships uh, happen, you know, as we have a lot of prayer requests from people with medical situations and all going on. But we've got to see that the Lord will see us through us. And again, as I'm sharing here, so uh, first of all, number one, we know that the Lord brought us into it. He allows it. He allows us to happen. Why? Because he loves us and he wants to grow us up to become more like him. See, and we think a lot of times, think about it this way. If we didn't go through struggles in life, would we really depend on God? Would we really go to the Lord? Many times we wouldn't. Why? Because everything's going good, you know, and I'm doing good and so forth. So we get so caught up in the world's ways, we don't, you know, think about, uh, you know, taking it to the Lord or, or, or many times even praying to God or having our morning devotions, which is really, really important. But when things aren't going so good, that's when we call out to God. Right? But he prays for us. And if we look at this, the whole entire scene is a dramatic picture of the church and the Lord today. God's people on the sea in the midst of storms, yet Jesus Christ is in heaven making intercessory for us. Praise God. He's praying for you. You know, this is why we claim Romans 8.28. That's an 8, Romans 8.34 that the Lord is praying for us. Jesus saw the disciples and knew their struggle. In Mark's gospel, record that they were straining at the oars. Jesus is praying that their faith would stay strong. Faith. And again, I always like to share, what is faith? It's the confident conviction that God will do what he says he will do, keeping his promises. 
That's a, a, a good understanding of what faith is. You see, He will carry us through. The Lord feels our burdens. He knows what we're going through. You know, it's like this. If you knew that Jesus was right in the next room praying for you, <clears throat> wouldn't that encourage you? Absolutely. Well, he is. He's right. He is right for you. Praying for all of us right now. He is in heaven interceding for us. And then we look at number three. Number three, he will come to you. As we look at this in uh, verse 26. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled. Or back to verse 25, prior to that. Now, on the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went to them walking on the sea. Walking on the water there. Jesus came right out there. Here he is praying. He knows what they're going through. Now, take that in your life. He knows what you're going through. Whatever struggle you're going through right now, he's right there with you. Praise God. And see, he's right there in the midst. As I have here, he's walking right on the problem. What was the problem? The problem was the storm in the sea. And here's Jesus defying this because he's God. He's God. He's all powerful, all wise, all known. He's God. And here he is, right in the midst of the water, walking right on it. With the wind whipping around and all the, uh, the, the winds whipping around and everything going chaos over there, he's right on top of the problem. So whatever your situation is, whatever you're going through, he knows what you're going through. And he's right there with you going through it, right there with you. And as we look at this, we don't like to be in conflict. We don't like pain. But what God opens, what wants to do is join us in the pain. Through the tri tri trial and turmoil we're going through, he walks us through. You know, I love Psalms 23. What David says, Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, you are with me. You're with me. Now, you know, he's not talking about, see, a lot of people mis misunderstood with that. He's not talking about dying in there. He's talking about going through a hard struggle. He's talking about going through a hardship. He's on the run from Saul at this time. And he knows that the Lord's with him. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, as I walk through the valley of this hard time, take it in your own life, as I walk through the valley of this disease, as I walk through the valley of this of this sickness, as I walk through the valley of this hardship that I'm going through, as I walk through the valley of this financial crisis that I'm going through, as I walk through all these valleys, I know that you are with me. I know that you are walking with me through this storm. Do we believe that? Do we really believe that? Do we really believe that? And why does he allow this? Because it helps us grow. It helps us grow. It helps us grow. And Jesus says to the disciples, be of good cheer. Take courage. It is I. Do not be afraid. So what does he do? He's speaking to them. So as you're going, so you have to remember everyone, you need to take scripture and it applies to you personally. This is how it is. So, what does he do? He calms their heart first by speaking to them. I love Psalm 46 10. Be still and know that I am God. When you are going through a hardship and you cry out, his spirit will speak to you. And calm you down. I know in my own personal life there's been times of struggles and hardships, and I've cried out to the Lord, and there's been a peace. The peace, as the scripture says, that passes all understanding. And I would cry out to the Lord, Lord God, 
I'm struggling with dealing with this. Help me through this. I know you're in control. I don't understand this. And I would feel a peace come over me. Saying, John, it's going to be like that. I'm with you. It's going to be like that. That's the Spirit speaking to me. And just like you. Here's the disciples on the sea. Then they see this image. Think about it. They didn't have, they lacked understanding. Oh no, it's a ghost. They were scared and thought some type of a ghost or something was coming at them. And Jesus says, do not be afraid. It is I. He's speaking to you today. Do not be afraid. It is me. I am with you. I am with you through that pain. I am with you through that hardship. I will see you through because you are my child. And see, I want to grow you up to become more like me. So see, I have to allow these trials to come into your life so you can grow and we can build that love relationship, you and I. That's how we bless the Lord. That's the Lord. So the whole purpose of the storm is to help the disciples grow in their faith. Jesus will one day leave and they would face many storms in ministry and they had to learn to trust him even though he was not in the pre presence with them or look as though he didn't care. You ever say, Lord, why are you allowing this in my life? Do you not even care what I'm going through? Don't you care? God says that. Don't you care what I'm struggling with? Yes, I care. I'm on top of the problem. And you don't realize it. You know what he says? Trust me. Trust me. Rely on me. Depend on me. I will carry you through. <clears throat> then in verse 28. And Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. I've spoken this many times. God calls you, then he equips you. See, he don't equip you and then call you. He'll call you for an assignment. He's calling all of us for an assignment. And then, when he calls you for that assignment, you'll say, but I can't do I don't have the ability or the skills to do this. I don't even have that kind of education. I will equip you because I call you. Because I chose you. It's pretty awesome, isn't it? Yeah. So Paul Peter, because I love sharing these things. Call me, tell me to come to you. And he knows that Jesus says, come to me. He's going to be able to get out of that boat and walk on that water. Are you ready to get out of the boat and walk on the water when God's calling you? You might be saying, well, Pastor Ronald, where's he calling me? Well, he's calling all of us to share our faith. He's calling all of us to be a testimony of what he's doing in our lives. He's calling you with the struggle you're going through and the hardship you're going through. He's calling you right now. He's speaking to you to share it. Somebody that he will put in front of you, he will make an arrangement and bring somebody to you in your path to share it with what you're going through. And through you sharing your heart with someone, that person may come to Jesus Christ. And think about it. That's what we're here for. We're all here to get out of the boat. We're 
but not to stay in the boat. What is staying in the boat? Staying in the boat is keeping our faith to ourselves. It's, we could call it closet Christianity. I hide to myself, I go to worship, I go to Bible study, I read my Bible, but I talk to no one about my faith. I keep it personal. Yes, your faith is personal, but it's to be shared with the world out there. And if you're staying in the boat, that's disobedience to God and what you, he's saying, come to me, come to me. Get out of the boat and walk. Walk on that water. He wants to take you out of the comfort zone. That's what he wants to do, take you out of the comfort zone. And here we see Peter walking on the water, going to Jesus. Because he kept himself fixed. I shared this many times. You know this story. Fixed on Jesus. Well, what happened? Because we know. When the wind whirled around and the storm was chaos out there again, and the fear struck him. See? That's the other big word. Fear. Most people do not share their faith because they're afraid. They're afraid of embarrassment. They're afraid they don't know enough. They're afraid they'll be ridiculed. Or they're afraid that they're not going to listen to me. What if they ask me a question and I don't know the answer? So you say, I don't know what it is. But I can tell you what Jesus has been doing and is doing in my life. And without, without him, I wouldn't be able to go through the next day. And you just share your heart with him. Remember, if God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of love and power, just like it says in Acts 1.8, when the Holy Spirit came upon them, what's it say? They received power, that spiritual power. And Satan wants to throw fear into you. But God's given you power through the Holy Spirit. And when he puts somebody in front of you to share with, he will give you the words what to say. You don't have to think of what to say or i got to plan this all out. You pray and let the Spirit of God work in and through you. That's our call. And see, Peter got out of that boat and he was focused on Jesus. And see, when he was focused on Jesus, the problem wasn't that bad. Yeah. When we focus on Jesus, the situation we're going through will not be that bad. Because see, the Lord will calm our hearts and give us truth with it and help us through it. Praise God. Which is number five, he will see us through. He will see us through. He sees us through the whole thing. But see, Peter, as we've seen, as we look down in scripture, when he began to take his eyes off the Lord, what did he do? He began to sink. He began to sink. See, this is towards us. Are you in a sinking situation? A rough situation in life? Let the Lord walk you through it. Let the Lord walk you through it. And see, he allowed them to go through all this so they can grow up and become more like him. And I like what it says in Hebrews 12 too. Bottom line was, fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. So here's the whole thing, really, with this part of Scripture. Jesus was with them through the beginning, through the whole thing, from very, very beginning to the end, walking them through it. From here to here. 
walking him through and through the whole storm. He was right there. He knew the storm was going to happen. He, he put them right in the storm. He remember? Get into the boat. He hurried them up. Get them into the boat. And here comes the storm, as you can see. He said, I have some lessons to teach you. I want you to grow. I want you to grow. See, and we grow in our faith when we're going through the storms. But we have to understand. He wants us to know he is with us both from the start and completion of all that we're going through. When Peter saw that he was going down, as I shared, he cried out, Lord, save me. And immediately Jesus stretched out his hand and took hold of him and pulled him up. Guess what? I also look at this, see, scriptures speaks many different ways. And it depends on where you are in your life. But see, I also look at this too as salvation. There are people sinking, dying, going to hell. Right now, as we sit here, listen to this message. People are sinking. They're dying. They're going to hell. And people say, why would God allow people to go to hell. He doesn't. It's their rejection of him. You have to accept. You have to be born again. You have to accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. And the first thing of that is like I always share, admit that you're a sinner. And the only way that you really admit that you're a sinner, this is so phenomenal, is the Holy Spirit already working in your life, revealing that to you. Because unsaved people, unless the Spirit's working in their life, they don't realize they're, they're really that bad of a person. They think they're pretty good people. They're not that bad. But see, when the Holy Spirit gets them, that's why we can't save anybody. We can just share our faith. The Spirit does it. But see, when the Spirit gets a hold of them, the Spirit reveals to them that they are a sinner. And then they confess it. They ask for forgiveness. And then you ask Jesus Christ to come into your life and that is salvation. And there are many people today that are in a sinking situation. We got a big picnic in the park over there, community outreach. Let me tell you something. There's a lot of sinking people. A lot of sinking people over there that don't know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. God's calling you to be that light in the darkness. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we praise and thank you for your word today, Father God. Father, I just praise and thank you that no matter what storms or struggles or trials we go through, that you are there carrying us through, Lord. You will see us from the beginning to the end because you are with us. You will never leave us nor abandon us, Father. And Father, I pray if there be anyone here who does not know Jesus Christ, as Lord and Savior, today would be that day by just submitting their sin, asking for forgiveness, and asking Jesus to come into their lives, Father. And I pray for all those that do, that they would be the light in the darkness for those that are in sinking situations today, on their way to a lost eternity. I praise and thank you, Father God, for your word today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.